Welcome to the NRT Now podcast, giving you the latest in Christian music news, topics, and artist interviews directly from the largest Christian music site online, newreleasetoday.com. Now, here's your host, Jake. Hey, y'all. Welcome to episode 27. Thanks for hanging out with us for a bit. And we're still in a period of time here where gym shorts are considered professional work attire, and nobody knows what day it is. <laughs> That's me to a T right now. It's just still so crazy. We know that there's still a lot of somberness with what's happening across the country and across our whole world here. We want to let you know that we're still praying over everybody that's affected and the whole situation. And by this point, I think everybody's been affected by this one way or the other. It's still a very, very heavy time in our country, and we're still praying about the whole situation. I really hope that through the midst of this, that you're able to hold on to that hope, that peace, that joy that only Christ and that only God can provide. When we finally get to the other side of this, whether we're in the middle right now, whether we're at the beginning, we're at the end, you know, wherever we're at with this process here, I hope that you're able to keep that peace and joy and hope that only comes from, through Christ. And once we get to the other side of this whole thing, that as Christians, we can guide those who are still trying to make sense of what all this was and to have them find that hope, peace, joy all through Christ. So... I really hope that you guys are doing okay, that you're staying sane. I'm getting cabin fever terribly. Um, I hope that you're able to get up and walk around and move, um, get some fresh air. I started running again, and I think I've already hurt myself, (laughs) which is no surprise to anybody at this house here. So, yeah, I, I really hope that you guys are doing well through this. One thing that's been really cool to see is just the innovation from the artists. We've been seeing a lot of live streams, We've seen full concerts go live online, and it's just been a lot of fun to see the creativity that's come through this. And honestly, I hope some of that sticks once everybody's able to get back out on the road. I hope the live shows and I hope the live streams still happen. So our guest for this episode is Wild Harbors. So I met Chris and Jenna you know, from Wild Harbors here at the Together We Love Awards show, which was a month ago at the time we were releasing this episode which is crazy to me because it seems like it was so much longer ago than that. But so much has happened in just that one month time. It seems like it was just a distant memory. That's how quickly everything has changed. We hung out all day. You know, we did the live show. It was awesome. And as we were saying our goodbyes and, you know, Hey, see you later. And it was funs and all that. I said, I told Chris and Jenna's like, next time you guys are through Dallas, I'd love to hang out with you guys, see a show. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. And, so Chris is like, let me let me get your number and we'll give you a call next time we're through. We'll figure it out and all that. It's like, yeah, for sure. I'll text you so you can save my number so when we call, you don't think it's some you know, auto warranty scammer or something from somewhere else. And we had a good chuckle about that, you know, walked away. And so I finally look at my phone, you know, an hour or two later, and there's a text from Chris <laughs> saying, hey, this is Chris. Uh, do you need an auto warranty? <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys, I lost it. It was hilarious. The right thing at the right time. <laughs> and so next morning, you know, I text back. It's like, well, isn't it my lucky day? I do. I need a car warranty. Oh gosh, guys, it it's hilarious. So I'm really excited for you to hear this conversation with Chris and Jenna. So let's head on over and hear from Wild Harbors. Continuing on our Together We Love, and I finally got that right, (laughs) our live show We Love Awards series here, we have Wild Harbors. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Uh And so you are performing tonight. We are. We're so honored to be here. It's so much fun. So introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about what Wild Harbors is. So I'm Jenna, and I am married to Chris right here. I am Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we know each other. We're married. It's a good start. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes we forget to mention that it shows. We find it's worth mentioning because then I'm like, oh, are they like dating? What's going on? <laughs> it's like, oh, we should, we should probably start leading with that. Yes, we are married and to each other. So yeah. there we go. 
Yeah. So Wild Harbors, we have been playing together in this band for the last couple of years. We played music together for a long time before Wild Harbors. Um, We started in college just playing cover songs and doing things on our college campus and played with other friends and things. And as time went on, eventually most of our friends who were more adept than we were at playing instruments moved away or (laughs) moved on. So we had to figure that part out for ourselves. We played just as a duo for a number of years. We played music together before we ever dated. So that came first. And we were, we were friends for a long time. I was a music major, a music and theater major in college and an elementary ed minor. So I was a teacher for 11 years and just doing music on the side because I loved it. But neither of us were people who went to school for like music business or anything like that. So we've just been kind of slowly figuring out what this looks like. And, you know, I don't know that we set out to become a band, but God kind of kept opening doors for us to play. And we loved getting to minister to people through playing shows and hearing people's hearts. And a couple of years ago when we were making a record, it became a time to rebrand, not just for the sake of rebranding, but realizing we were kind of on the verge of a new chapter. (laughs) (laughs) So you can't see what's happening here, but she's looking like either for validation or like, keep going. Right. Like this is the nod off to you. (laughs) Oh, that was the pass. (laughs) That was the pass. Here's the baton. I hear you. The blank look from the husband. Like what? Sorry, I'm still, (laughs) if you're not in the room also, I'm I'm currently drinking a coffee. So it's waking my brain up as we go. (laughs) But yeah, around that point, it was the time where, like Jenna said, we'd been playing music, but also working part-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And I think that was more the moment where the number of gigs we had on the calendar was starting to eat up all the vacation time. It's like, all right, this is getting harder and harder to manage. So God was very kind in that, like, there was not really like this huge, well, there was, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't like we went from two 40-hour a week jobs down to like full-time musicians. It just kind of kept incrementally scaling back where it's like, all right, well, I'm 30 hours a week now, or like Jenna's like two or three days a week now. Mm -hmm. And eventually like there's nowhere left to go, but to eventually take that final jump. I'm so thankful that God was patient with us to help us kind of baby step towards it. I don't know that it made that final leap any less scary. I mean, maybe it would have, but there were so many unknown questions of, I don't understand how you make a living doing music. And it's clear that, we love to do this and we love connecting with people through it. And we've seen what God can do through music in general. We've seen him specifically work through songs that we've written and when we've played them at shows, but how do you translate that into being able to pay your rent? (laughs) I don't know how this works. And Chris was so good to gently kind of encourage me of, Hey, People are figuring this out all the time, and I think there's a way to figure this out and a way for this to happen. And if not, if we try this and it bombs, then we can stop. Like, we can go back and do other things, but I think we will regret it if we don't really give this our all for a season here. And he was so right. It has been very different to do this as our full-time job instead of just the thing on the side, but it has been so worth it and every hard thing has not outweighed the richness that there has been in the people that we've met and the moments that we've seen God working at shows through messages that we've gotten from people just in our tiny little corner of making music. Wild Harbors. Where does that name come from? I'm I'm hoping that there's a good story and some meaning behind this. Like it's such an awesome name that I'm really hoping that there's something here. Well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, we appreciate that. That that's glad to hear it because it took uh, it was probably six months of just writing stuff down for us. We had been playing as a band called Chris and Jenna for a long time, Mm. and aptly named. Right. That one was easy to stumble upon. (laughs) That one you didn't have. We didn't have to work at it at all. After some turning it over a bit more and thinking about it. It's like, all right, like, does that name really sound like what we're doing now? Mm. Does that really evoke the images and the feelings that I think that this music sounds like? And it just hit the point where it felt like the two things were incongruent. Yeah. So for us, it felt like a very, like you were saying, an intuitive time to sort of rebrand. So for us, it's like, all right, well, if like, where do you know what we recorded? That is the food in the restaurant, so to speak. What do we want the restaurant to be called then? Like that gives (laughs) people an idea of what they're coming into to experience. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, every time I try to think of something, like you want a cool band name and I try to think of something cool 
And it's like almost as soon as you can say it out loud, you're laughing about how stupid it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so the exercise I did for a long time is I would just open up my notebook and I would just basically like write out the alphabet, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'd write avalanche, Batman, childcare, daydream, elephant, just all the way <laughs> through. And then when I got to Z, I'd start with A again and I'd just keep going until I have maybe three or four pages and then I just kind of look around and see, like, do any of these pair up in interesting ways to see what kind of stuck out? And I think at some point Wild and Harbors was in that list somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. We we kind of, through doing that, wound up with words that we felt drawn to of like, oh, yeah, this captures some of the spirit of what our songs are about, what our sound is like. Mm-hmm. So we literally put them in a hat and we're pulling words out of a hat <laughs> two at a time. Like, how about these two? How about these two? Until we had, like a running list of like, these are contenders of different options. And we kind of tested them out and shared them with close friends and people who knew our story and our music. And Wild Harbors was the one that surfaced as people being able to almost see elements of it that we didn't Mm -hmm. at the time, but seeing, yeah, you know, you all are setting out into this uncharted territory that you are, (laughs) you are leaving behind your normal salaries, like nine to five kind of jobs to go into this undefined thing. So there's this unplanned wild element to it. And this idea of a Harbor being a place that you can set out from, but also come back to, we were setting out from anything that was really known, but also we were hoping that we were heading for new, places that God was leading us to. So it stuck. Yeah. And we went with it. I was not disappointed. Like just the creativity. (laughs) Like I I, I would have never even thought to do that. Like I'm just sitting here like I would have been on Google. I would have been there. We were everywhere. Because you come up with something and then you're like, oh, let me look this up. Oh, that website's taken. Oh, that's already a band. It's not enough just to think of it. It's like sometimes you think of it and you're like, oh, it's already like a dog rescue in Minnesota somewhere. (laughs) Like, you know, it's like, you never know. And then sometimes something you think, there's no way that's available. Somehow no one's touched it yet. It's amazing. But we tried everything, you know. Mm -hmm. We'd be in the car driving, like we would do like a spontaneous word shouting. (laughs) Like, all right, I'm going to say a word and then you're going to say a word and we'll see if they like sound neat. So I'd be like, one, two, three, duck bill. Apple. And like, right, (laughs) duck bill, apple. (laughs) Duck bill, apple is not a Probably not. Probably not. Mm -hmm. And then we'd try again. (laughs) So that's the new album title we have for your for sophomore? Yeah. So we've got that set. (laughs) We're doing work here. We're not just talking to the edge. We're doing work here. Yes. Yes. We still have a running text thread with some friends of ours of band names whenever we come up with them or their kids come up with them and they send them along. It's been so fun. Oh, no. Okay. So give me some of the kids ones. Um, I'm I'm intrigued now. The most recent one, Balloonatic. (laughs) Like That's lunatic, like balloon, a balloon and lunatic. It's it was pretty clever. Lunatics. The balloonatics. I like it. I think yeah. it's fun. Yeah, that's that's not terrible. I know. That's if you're out there and you need a band name, balloonatics is available, I believe. <laughs> right. So a new service. Just keep that text thread running. Yeah. You know, yes. Just you know, so help out new artists that are coming on there the scene. <laughs> yes. For ten bucks a pop, you too can have a new band name. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were talking about the incremental. So tell yeah. us, you know, about that last push and just talk to us a little bit about jumping into the unknown. You know you're called. You know this is what mm-hmm. you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that jump off and just jumping into what God has for you. Yeah, we felt very grateful that the risk felt like it was incrementally decreasing as our jobs were sort of shifting over the time. But I think it was unrealistic to think that you'll ever get to a point where there's no risk because it still involved a huge risk to even step away from our part-time jobs to say like, all right, this is what we're committing to now for this season. Mm -hmm. I think for us, so many lessons came in the form of realizing that not every risk is a reckless risk. Mm -hmm. You can make a calculated risk to have friends who would be willing to sit down with us and be like, hey, we don't think you're crazy. What you're pursuing feels like in line with what you're made to do. Mm -hmm. And just because you're giving up a full-time income in terms of a paycheck showing up every week, doesn't mean that this can't work. So having someone take the time to break down how much money do you need to survive every week? (laughs) And then to say like, all right, so so really that equals like, you know, this many shows or like, let's make a little budget spreadsheet and having people turn these sort of nebulous, intangible ideas, like do music into like actionable tasks of do this and do this. It made it a lot more, I don't know, easy to look at and feel like, okay, like this can work. Yeah. It made it seem possible. I think for me, when I started teaching, I 
was really grateful to get to do that job. I love kids. Yeah. I, I was good at teaching, which has taken me time to be able to say, oh, I was good at this without feeling like pompous. <laughs> yeah. But it was something that came naturally to me. And I think I knew when I took my job at the get-go, like this is not it forever. This is good for now and God is providing this for me for now. And I'm glad to be here, but I know this is not what I'm supposed to do for the next 30 to 40 years. But it was really hard for me to think, well, what is then? Like, what yeah. if I leave this, what would I do? And it was just easier to not think about it. So yeah. I would conveniently just stay busy and not yeah. evaluate any of that. Right. So finally, different moments of crises and things would come <laughs> up of like, what am I doing with my life? And just getting to those points of realizing, oh, we are allowed and perhaps in fact intended to ask God specific questions. Cause I would just kind of sit there lost in this fog of, well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know. So I, now I'm just going to go on and keep doing exactly what I'm doing. But when we specifically sat down, when we had the opportunity to record our next album, we worked with Andrew Osenga in Nashville and we really loved his music and loved his producing and wanted to work on this project with him. And he said, yeah, you know, you'll spend a month down in Nashville making the record with me. And I'm like, I'm a teacher. <laughs> I get two days off a year. Like right. this is not a thing. So we specifically prayed this crazy sounding prayer of, should I leave my teaching job to go make a record? And those next two weeks were full of abundantly clear answers from people, some people who knew what we were questioning, but some people who didn't at all of just God working through them being like, you know, change is really good. I'm finding like, it's just all these crazy <laughs> signs and a guest pastor came to our church, all this stuff, but it was incredible. And such a lesson in asking him specifically for things and not just kind of this nebulous, like, what do I do with my life? Expecting him to like, send an email with some sort of detailed list. <laughs> it's like we have the technology. I mean, right. Right. come on, Lord. <laughs> yeah. And I think it was freeing too. Like we got those very clear yeses. I had a very limited time to make that decision because I had to tell my school like within a two weeks, I think, whether I was coming back for the following year or not. So I didn't have a ton of time to think about it. And I went from the beginning of that two weeks being absolutely terrified. Like, what are we thinking to the end of that, having such a God given peace about it. And I think that was such confirmation because I, in my like natural human self am a planner. I like try to think through everything. And I think it just made it clear that it was from God and not from me <laughs> because it is not Jenna to be like, sure. Yeah. We'll just jump into this thing. And I don't know how it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. It was so scary. And I think it was such a lesson in like, things aren't going to get not scary before it's time to do them. We have to learn how to go while we're still scared and actually trust God that he is who he says he is and depend on him and follow his leading and know that it's okay to be scared and that he's going to meet us in that. I'm exactly like you. I'm a planner. We yeah. went on the Jesus Freak cruise this year. Ooh, wow. And Oh, a blast. And mm. we'd met some friends a couple of years earlier mm -hmm. that lived about an hour away from us. We're in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We're still in the same Metroplex, but that still means an hour away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, goodness. Oh. We all went again the next time when we brought the kids this time. I got in charge of the excursion in Nassau because I'm the planner type. Yeah. Like I had a Google spreadsheet. I had the stops. I had the time. Yeah. Oh. I had everything. Like I, yes. I had the route <laughs> and we were going to hit this. We're going to hit this. We're going to hit... Yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm right there with you. That sounds like me planning a trip. Yeah. Chris is like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I did like this guy for a second. No. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a churchy term at one point, a, a holy discontent. Mm. You know, kind of what? And to sound yeah. like really spiritual and holy and all that kind of stuff. I, I've experienced that, you know, at times too. You know, you just like, something's not right, but yes. I don't know what. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. And, it, and it's amazing when it finally does come together. It's like, that's what it was. Uh -huh. That's what's been bugging me for a year, a month. Yeah. Or, right. You know, however long that holy discontent has been going through yes. when the pieces all kind of fall together. It's an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that phrasing of that. I think that's really accurate. And I had experienced that like divine discontent, that holy discontent. I mean, kind of constantly knowing that teaching wasn't 
the thing forever. But I had had other moments where God was raising up an opportunity in front of me that could have met that. And every time before this, I managed to push it to the edges of my brain and just think about it long enough so that it didn't become an option anymore. And I felt like I wasn't making a choice, but I really was. I was choosing not to do that. So, you know, realizing this and kind of talking about it together, it was this like, oh, we don't want to live the rest of our lives doing that, of just pushing off these God nudges and then waking up one day 40 years down the road like, what if I had followed even just one of those things, one of those little invitations from God? Uh, let's talk a little bit about this latest album here. Yeah, I, I love it. Can I call it folky without sure. offending you? Like, sure, yeah. 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 I mean, it's cool to kind of see these things coming out, just acoustic or yeah. just the kind of stripped down. I, I'm kind of a sucker for that. I love the the rock and I love you know the skillet types and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, but pulling it down to just the acoustic and just letting the songs breathe. I, you know, I love that side as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I definitely love love the sound that you guys are are running down. Thank you. As you're writing this, what's your themes going through it? And they they can't see. I'm like oh, gesturing quietly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I became a hand talker, but like oh, I'm like wild me and too, dramatic. Man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> As you're writing this album, what was kind of the consistent theme through this? Mm, that's a good question. I think probably a lot of the songs we were writing in that season were maybe just centering around conversations we wanted to be having, but weren't not that it was prophetic, but it was kind of indicative in a lot of ways where the songs we ended up working on were kind of all about this idea of risk and moving forward and being about action versus inaction. In some ways it was our way of talking about it without having to talk about it. (laughs) So it kept it at the forefront of our brain just because that's the stuff we were singing about because that's the stuff that I think underneath that surface layer was really resonating with us and feeling very personal and important. It's like, oh yeah, I guess this is more revealing than maybe we expected it to be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so many of those songs looking back feel like an attempt to not let those things go unsaid. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think there's elements of folkiness in our music. We kind of lean more towards the pop side of that a lot of times. We're not quite folky enough that we could go play a folk festival. Yeah. (laughs) We're like, yeah, we kind of hang out in between here somewhere in like singer-songwriter territory, pop. I feel like we we pick up a lot of folkiness just as a residual effect of playing acoustic a lot. Sure, yes. Just from like, all right, we don't have the money to pay a band to come with us every time we (laughs) go out. Yes, it's a lot cheaper to just travel to. Right. But yeah, it's been neat to kind of find those ideas and voicing them instrumentally and with arrangements and things. And both like on the record, which is a much fuller sound, like it's full mm-hmm. band. Yeah. There's incredible musicians that play on that record that we were so excited to work with. And then when we're alive, just the two of us finding that mm-hmm. energy of, hey, digging into relationships is worth it. Digging into uncharted territory is worth it. Yeah. And yeah finding that energy like come out through the guitar, through piano lines and through different things like that has been such a fun journey. I, for one, am very excited to hear you guys tonight in the live performance. It's going to be an awesome night. Yeah, I think so. You know, like I've been saying throughout the series here, it's going to be on YouTube later. So please go back and uh, check it out. Great. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you guys for hanging out.